Ben, really quickly, did you watch uh, the Bulls game last night? I did. Okay. I did. That was fun. All right, fuck it. Let's talk about it really quickly. So uh, <laughs> the Bulls snapped the Knicks' streak of 13 games. If you remember, they snapped the Heat streak of 27 games. Don't you dare face off against the Bulls with something on the line at the United Center, apparently. Uh, is the, yeah, except, is, for, except for the playoffs. Except for the playoffs. Except for the playoffs on the line because they haven't done that the last couple of years. However, if they do go to the playoffs, if, if, the, if the season ended today, I would actually like their chances because they face the Nets, who they're 3-1 and one against. Uh, and if they drop a seed, they have to face the Pacers, who they're one and three against. So I would actually like their chances. Now, firstly, going back to this game, no Joakim Noah, no Taj Gibson, and still no Derrick Rose. My goodness, what the hell has happened with that situation? A video response down below where I vent my frustrations. Now, the Knicks were up 15, and then the Bulls went on a 16-3 to run. Amazing. One of the most boneheaded plays, and granted, he had the fantastic game last night off the bench, Nate Robinson with 35. The most boneheaded play. They could put the game out of reach. Nate Robinson dribble, 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 dribbling out the clock, taking the air out of the ball. Chucks up a shot that doesn't even hit rim with 1.8 seconds left. The Knicks call timeout. Carmelo Anthony has a fantastic look and misses. Let's just firstly focus on Jimmy Butler. Uh, 22 points and 14 rebounds. That is a career high rebounds wise. Huh? If he is not starting next year, there has to be for some odd reason that it's not happening. The improvement that I've seen with him, uh, Ben, has been fantastic when he, since he's been yeah. drafted out of Marquette. Eventually, Thibodeau would coach him up into, into a decent rotation three. I didn't think he'd be playing a whole lot of two just because I, I thought he's got good length and, and decent size. And I thought maybe at some point he'd develop some sort of like a corner three-point shot to sort of become a specialist in that area. But the reason you're going to put Butler on the floor is because he's a terrific defender. Uh, he's athletic. He's, he's quick. Um, and, and you sort of knew what you were getting from him, and, and maybe you could develop him. Um, the, the progress he's made in his second year is remarkable. And, yeah, you're absolutely right. He should be starting next year. And, and you know, especially if he's able to attack the glass the way he has and you have a healthy Derrick Rose next year, he can be a spot-up three-point shooter in the corner because if Rose is at the top and his quickness is back and he's able to penetrate and you have two great wing players in, in Ding and Butler that can make outside shots, that can also dribble to the basket and are athletic enough to create their own shot, yeah. that, that's a solid front court. It, it's not, I'm sorry, a solid back court. It's not the best back court in the league. But it, it's a very, very good one. If they play Brooklyn, I don't particularly – I think Brooklyn is a talented team that doesn't take advantage of a very good coach in P.J. Carlissimo. I think they're an incredibly soft team. The Bulls should be able to win that series even without Rose, even without a, a healthy Joe Kim Noah. Until they have Rose back uh, at 100% and playing on a regular basis, having their best player on the court – uh, they're not going to the finals. Ben, no one is beating the Heat. I mean, it's very, very simple. However, we're somehow getting back to the Bulls-Knicks game. Uh, this was their first sweep since 2004-2005 with the Knicks. Uh, the rivalry is back, question mark. Now look, Nate Robinson had 35, as I said, off the bench in 32 minutes, but he had that one boneheaded play. However, he made up for it with, I believe, if SB Nation didn't make the gif yet, I'll be very disappointed of him <laughs> doing, the, doing the discount double check, Steve Novak-esque uh, towards, uh, I believe it was at the end of the third quarter. It was a fantastic shot. One of the even more boneheaded plays was in overtime when J.R. Smith got a technical foul. Uh, yep. when, when the Bulls were actually called for a foul. I mean, it's, it's so J.R. Smith. I'm hot and cold with him as, it's so Nate Robinson-ish, actually. Not exactly the technical foul, but just how fans have this perception of how hot and cold a player can be. Oh, no, 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 J.R. Smith. Oh, okay, he made the shot, okay. No, 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 oh, okay, actually, he just made the shot. The Knicks injuries decimated this team. It was a great game. It was a fun game to watch. Me personally, if they have Tyson Chandler in there, and they have Kenyon Martin, and, not Kenyon Martin, if they have Amari Stoudemire in there, if they have those two key components in there, I don't think the Bulls win this game if those two guys are playing. I, I don't think so either, but then, you know, if, if, you, if the Knicks get those guys back and the Bulls are playing with, with Noah and Taj, and, uh, and by the way, they got a shocking plus 20 in the stack column from Rip Hamilton last night. And yeah, surprising. Everyone, I, I, I don't know, I thought Rip was dead. Yeah, you, but you can make the same argument for the Bulls. And I think if both teams are healthy, I, I think the Bulls, you know, when it, when it comes down to it, I, I think the Bulls probably are better than the Knicks because I think Tom Thibodeau is one of the best coaches in, in the league, and I, I still don't trust Mike Woodson yet. And, and the Bulls have shown an ability 
to lock down a team's best player. And Carmelo's still going to get his points, but he's going to take a yeah. ton of shots to be able to do so. Uh, that is Ben Heisler, who is a contributor today on TYT Sports. Uh, you could follow him on Twitter at Benny Heis and check out his fabulous work on uh, MLB Sirius XM Radio. Uh, ben, it has been hey, a pleasure. Uh, hey, hey, Strauber, can I get a plug-in for, uh, for the Honest Brew as well? We've got a bunch of good stuff on there, including the uh, latest podcast, uh, with Jordan Schultz of the Huffington Post. So check that out on thehonestbrew.com. Well, I'm not sure you really needed to ask because you just sort of did it. Uh, so congratulations yeah, yeah, with did. that. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Uh, ben, uh, thank you so, so much. I know <laughs> my director's laughing because uh, I'm giving you a bunch of shit. It's okay. We have history. Uh, not like Quentin and Granky, though. So, uh, no, Ben, thank you so different. much for the time. Next time we'll get you on Skype. So this is a little more interactive, but I really appreciate the time.